seven, daily sales report. We're going to review your end of day closing in MaxTrax, how we want to count our cash, count our payments that we receive through the day, and then make a bank deposit on a daily basis. Now, depending on your workflow, I was a night person. I never got to the shop very early, so I always did my end of day closing after I took my last customer of the day. If you are uh, more of a morning person, you can do this procedure the following day, the following morning. Now, we do have a couple of motor tracks users, our DOS legacy users on the phone. We have Amanda here in Georgia and Randy. Um, you guys are Michigan, right, Randy? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so you guys have been using our DOS version for years where the daily book in Motor Tracks is very different than what we do in Max Tracks. It no longer is posting to your general ledger at the end of the day when you post your daily book. In Max Tracks, everything is posting to your general ledger in real time because it's built on what's called a SQL database. Now, not that you need to know that programming information, but it's a much more advanced language that we're programmed in. So every time you go into an, a repair order, let's say this repair order here. Hey, guys, we got a little background noise at a mean shop. If I were to post this right here, guys, and hit pay, this, and let's say um, we wouldn't skip all that stuff, but let's say we took cash, this $100 cash, this will post to my general ledger immediately. We don't have to wait to the end of the day like a lot of other software programs or our old DOS program. Let's just do that for fun. We're going to say we're putting $100 to our cash drawer. And I just post it with today's date. So let's go through what a normal end of day closing would be like. And let's say we're doing this the next morning for the previous day's business. We click on the icon that says daily sales. And it, I, it, it's not this one time, but it will, let's see. Actually, let me, let me prep this here just for a second, guys. Let me put this in here. Hold on just a minute. I should have prepared this before the webinar, and I didn't, so forgive me. I'm doing it right now. Okay. So I just clean that up a little bit. So what would happen? We click on daily sales. It will always default to the previous day's date. You guys see that? It says 12-6 because I'm doing my daily sales report the next morning. So I just click OK. And this is a summary of my sales for the day, for yesterday, for repair orders, and if I sell anything over the counter for parts invoices. And you guys see that I just work on the service counter, so I just have parts labor, supply charges, cores, sales tax. And it says down here I had a total of four repair orders counted for the day yesterday. So I usually don't spend a lot of time on this screen. I look at it just for a few minutes. But this is what I do the next, the next morning is balance my drawer. So my system says at the beginning of the day yesterday, I started with $200 in my cash drawer. I, the computer says at the end of the day yesterday, I now have $225.80 in my cash drawer. So I say I count my cash right now. And let's say I actually counted my cash and got $215.80. Well, before going forward, I already know that I'm off by $10. So in my shop, what would I do? I would say, hey, did anybody take $10 out of the cash drawer? They may say, yes, I took $10 out to put gas in a vehicle, put fuel in a vehicle that I needed to take on a long test drive. So I would go down to the money bag. You guys see the cash drawer icon on the screen? This is the same as the cash drawer money bag icon on the toolbar. 
So I would just click on this, and I had a cash payout yesterday. I'm going to click cash payout. Pay to, let's say, um, Conoco for fuel. And I could say here, it was a fuel for customer vehicle. It was uh, $10. I do want to change my date to the date that it came out of my cash drawer, which would have been yesterday. And here is where I disperse what it was for. And look at all these different things that I can pay for with cash out of my cash drawer. Um, uh, employee advance, pretty popular. Um, anything, office meals, if I bought pizza or sandwiches for the shop. But in this case, it was fuel for a customer vehicle. And I click Finish. OK, so I just cancel out of this screen. And notice, my cash drawer now is computed to say $215. And that's exactly how much I counted. So I physically put in here $215.80. So I always do the cash first, guys, because if I do have a difference here, and if I make an adjustment through the cash drawer, it zeroes out any of these counts I've already done. So always do your cash first. And notice over here under, on the right where it says counted amount, I have my counted cash, 215.80. OK? So the next thing we do, and I do put stacks on my desk. I put all the checks in one stack. I put all the American Express in one stack, the Visa in one stack. So I would double click on check, or I can highlight it and hit the details button in the lower left. I just double click. And this is just saying, OK, Sabrina, make sure you have a check on, you know, in your hand for $189.29. And my workflow, guys, was actually I would fill out my deposit slip at this very moment. It keeps things a lot cleaner, and I'll explain to you why, um, especially motor tract users. So click in the cleared column, fill out your actual physical deposit slip, and click OK. And uh, my American Express, double click. Yes, I have one of those. Good. And Visa, yep, I have one of those. So I'm just verifying that I have these payments in, in front of my hand. Now, what happened to me a fair amount of times, guys, was I'm, I could be holding two visa slips, but only one is showing here. And that happens if it's the end of the day and I'm cashing out a customer and I just hand write on his repair order, paid visa. So I may actually have to go back to my service counter and, and post that payment. Make sure I change my date to yesterday, but post my payment to have it show up here. So I just wanted to share that with you. It, it happened to me, honestly, probably once a week. OK, so what I just did is I verified my check pay, checks received here. I counted the American Express I received, and I counted the Visa I received. So over here on the right, see it says counted checks. This amount here, the 189.29, should match my deposit slip that I just filled out. This amount here, the total of my credit cards and debit cards, should match my batch report. So you guys should have that off of your credit card machine, your batch report. OK? So this is the counted amounts. And this should always say amount over or short was zero. If you have an amount over or short, I would probably, if it were me, I would probably do a cash for transaction to say that I was over or short. $5 or $0.75 cents or that kind of thing. But something I want to be really, really, really clear about, if you, um, and if you are over a short $3 here or $5 here, this screen here does not post anywhere. And I've said this a hundred times. This is a glorified pen and paper. It is just to say that, yes, I, Sabrina, on this day, you know, 12-6, counted this much cash and verified I took these credit cards in checks. It doesn't post anywhere like it would in motor tracks. And I'm speaking specifically um, to you guys, Jody and Amanda. In motor tracks, this button would say post to my general ledger. This doesn't. Again, this is just a printed report that we do at the end of the day or the next morning to say that I physically counted this money. Okay. 
So what I also do in my daily money drop down here, check this out. You see the cash drop field is editable, and these are not. Okay, so I can say, you know, I keep $200 in my cash drawer. I can say I'm going to deposit that $15.80 that I took in yesterday. So notice if I type this in here, it puts cash left in drawer for tomorrow, $200. So this, the $200 here shows up tomorrow up at the top. Phones from the nation's top carriers are now conveniently located Come on, guys, the sorry. The roof belongs to Walmart, except during the holidays when they lease. I don't know who went on hold music there. Okay, guys, so you can see this $200 here will show up here tomorrow automatically. Now notice, the system will let me decide how much cash I want to keep on hand, but Max Tracks assumes I make a deposit of my checks every day. So I, I tell people to trust me for the first couple of weeks, just try it this way until you really get it under your belt and really understand how it works. Max Tracks thinks that I'm going to deposit those checks. So even if I only go to the bank once a week, which is what I did, I usually just went to the bank on Fridays, I would have a deposit slip filled out with checks and possibly cash for each day of the week. Now, if I didn't take a check in that day, of course, I don't have to worry about it. But because it's grayed out, we like to fill out the deposit slip. Now, obviously, credit cards drop. This 1577.61 is grayed out. Now, this is grayed out because your batch report, when you hit, you batch out your credit card machine, that goes to your bank automatically. You don't have to do anything about it. So even though you may think, I'm actually not going to the bank every day, there usually are funds going to your bank every day. That's why this is grayed out. Now, keep in mind here, guys, this information here, like we had up here when we counted on the left, this shows up in this date range, 12-6 to 12-6, automatically whenever you close out a repair order. Okay? Shows up automatically. So all we're doing is doing a count. And then we click Close and Print. And we uh, say, yes, I've chosen to leave $200 in my cash drawer for tomorrow's beginning cash. Is this amount correct? We say yes. And then I have all these reports print out. Now, I know this is a lot of reports. It's a lot of paper. But what each one of these nine reports provides you is a financial snapshot of your business. So if you are an absentee owner, or if you have more than one location, or if you, um, if a shop I worked at, the last two shops I've worked at, had three service riders. So, you know, we were a high volume shop, and if we wanted to make sure we saw everything that was going on in the business, we'd print all these reports. We have one here that says, did anything get voided? Any payments? And did anything get modified? And, and not that, you know, theft or anything is an issue in your guys' businesses. I'm not saying that. But it does help you get an idea of what were all the cash drawer transactions for the day. Okay? So that's just what this is here for. Now, this one at the top is very important. And we're going to preview this since I can't actually print this report and show it to you. We'll preview it. Now, there is something also I want to mention. Every last one of these reports you can print after the fact. I could do a cash drawer details report for December 6th in January if I wanted to. Again, another feature we did not have in our DOS version. Love this feature. But there's one report that does not print the same after the fact. It's very critical. And this is this one here. It's called the Daily Cash Drawer Financial Summary. Let's preview it. Now, this is an option under your report. But part of it does not print. Okay, so the first page of this is a summary of that first page. This is our sales numbers, right? Four invoices for the day. Let me get my little pointer going here. Um, let's see this arrow. So you guys see we got the four invoices for the day. We've got our sales totals here, right? And down here we have um, our different payment methods, cash, check, Visa, American Express, okay? Now there's something that I want to show you. Let me make my pointer go back to pointer. 
On page two, there's that $10 payout that we had. And on page three, now let me make this a smaller page for a moment. You see this here, guys? I call this the magic box. And this, this magic box will not print out if I print this report for December 6th and January. The other stuff will. You know, um, let's see, that will. This will print out. This detail will print out. And this at the bottom, this payment method here at the bottom, this stuff, this will print out. But what doesn't print out is what's in the magic box. And why this is so important, it's saying that on this day I decided to deposit $15.80. And this is very important, guys. Let me explain to this, you this uh, because I messed this up for the entire first month that I ran MacTrack myself. Now, it says my checks I deposited was $189.29. And, of course, I should have already filled up my deposit slip. And then my credit card drop is this $1577.61. And remember, that goes through every night without us having to do anything, right? That's the way our credit cards work. Okay, before I move on, any questions on this? And I'm going to show you why this is so important. Okay. So let's go ahead and close out of here. So normally we would hit the print reports button and it would print all the reports. If there were one of these reports without data, it will say, it'll prompt you, hey, there's no data to print. Click OK. I'm just going to click close though since you guys couldn't see my printer reports anyway. And it goes away. Done. So that's half of my end of day closing. And in reality, that usually takes less than five minutes. I just wanted to explain to you what we were looking at. Now what happens is the next thing you do immediately after doing that end of day closing for most shops, I know, for example, Randy may do that end of day closing and then Jody might go in later on the next day or later on in the day and do the bank deposit. Um, you know, Amin, you would do both those steps. Amanda, yeah. of course, you would do both those steps. Um, Matt, again, I probably, in your case, you probably would do both those steps unless you had somebody else doing your accounting, which technically actually starting in January, you're going to be doing this second step. But I don't want you to worry about, um, Matt, this second step because we're actually not going to do that in your shop for December. Okay. Okay? So we click on banking and then we click on make bank deposit and we select which bank account this deposit is going into. And most shops just have one, but I have seen other shops where they have credit cards go into one account and their office deposits, their cash and checks go into another. So uh, let me know if you guys have anything um, kind of unusual like that and we can discuss it. So what I have here, guys, is my items to deposit. There is my check up here at the top for the, uh, where's this one? For the 189.29. Yes. Sabrina, I have one question. Yes. Um, in, in motor tracks, we have four different checking accounts, and three of them are old ones that we haven't used in years. Right. Will those will those get transferred over to the GL? No, they won't. And remember, um, for Amanda and for uh, Jody and Randy, nothing converts over from motor tracks to Max tracks um, as far as your general ledger. It's blank, which is frankly, kind of exciting because I've worked with about 150 motor track users. One shop, guys, out of 150 motor track users in the last two years had an accurate trial balance, one. So this gives us a great opportunity to put in our beginning balances. You know, in um, both Matt and Amin are pretty much starting new businesses. So for those guys, same thing. We're actually not worrying about previous years or previous computer system data, we actually get to start fresh. So, um, and I'm going to work with those guys, both of them, starting January 1, because you can put in your beginning amounts for your accounting really at any point. Because a lot of folks, and um, if Roman, if you're hearing this, a lot of businesses start out just writing service in MathTrack. And once they get used to that, then they move forward to tracking their inventory. And then after that, then they start working on the accounting. And if you guys don't use the accounting right away, that's okay. 
we'll work with you later on to help clear that out. Okay, we'll clear it out and put in beginning balances. Okay, good question. Good question, Randy. Okay, guys, so now remember the second that I close out an RO, it shows up on this list. Okay, so what I'm going to do, because I had that magic box, remember I printed out that one report with the magic box, I said on that magic box that I'm going to de deposit $15.80. Okay, that's down here. That's the first thing on my, de my deposit slip. So why is that so important that you guys have that printed, uh, printed sheet, that magic box printed out? Because this parentheses, probably the most confusing part of our software, right here, this parentheses where it says $315.80 is real time. It says that at this very moment, you know, for me at 11.30 um, Mountain Time on December 7th, I have $315.80. But remember, I had $200 to start with, right? And I said on my daily sales report that I took in $15.80. So shouldn't this parentheses say $215.80? The reason why it doesn't is because this morning, December 7th, I cashed out a customer for $100. So. What happened, guys, let's be real honest about what I did, is I did this daily sales and cash store report, and I did it, you know, for every day, and by the way, there's that $100 for today, because it automatically goes to today's date. I went through this whole thing, I counted my amounts, I put how much I deposited here, I was so proud, I even had down here how much cash I had left in my drawer for every day for the entire month of January in 2008. Well, back in the DOS version, if you hit Post Daily Book, which this button used to say Post in print, you'll notice since then they've actually changed it, it doesn't post anywhere, guys. It posts nowhere. But for the entire month of January, I thought it was posting to my bank account. So I went to reconcile my bank account at the end of the month. I didn't use the register and max tracks. I did online banking every day, right? So I went to this banking, I went to reconcile my bank account, and my bank account said negative $75,000 or so. And I flipped out. I'm like, oh my gosh, I broke the system, I did something wrong, or there's a bug. <laughs> I didn't do any of those. I didn't do any of those things, guys. I just forgot that the second half of your end of day closing is to click banking, make bank deposit. And when I clicked on this, I had, you know, I had hundreds of payments in here, hundreds. So it was actually very easy for me to fix. I took my daily sales and cash store reports because at the end of the day, guys, I take all of those reports, usually seven to 10 pages, I staple them all together, I staple my batch report and a photocopy of my deposit slip, and I have to say I also took a photocopy of every single check I ever took and I stapled it all together, and I threw it in the drawer. So I had a complete paper-based financial picture of my business. So all I did, guys, is I just grabbed out all of January, put it on my desk, went to the magic box, and started clicking off, you know, checks and visas or whatever, one day at a time. Now you guys can see, it would not be a big deal. These have dates next to it, see? Two thousand. December 6th. But what happened, <coughs> excuse me, what happened, I had in this parentheses down here like seven or eight thousand dollars. So not only did I have seven or eight thousand dollars in here, when I got to the end of the month, um, I was actually missing some cash. Why? Because people would take money out for gas or for car wash or for pizza out of my cash drawer. So what did I have to do? I had to go into this cash drawer, the money bag, and put all those payouts in the system. Are you guys following me, kind of how this works? Yeah. yeah. Okay. You can see, I mean, I kind of did it the hard way, but I'm almost glad I did because now I really understood how it worked. So the way that we would do this in real life, if this is December 7th, I would click on my checks and I would do cash. Now. 
I had some shops that would just click everything for December 6th. Now, why don't we do that? Because what happens is this is going to show up as a deposit on my check register. And you guys know as well as I do, at the end of the month, when you get your bank statement, your checks and your American Express and your visas don't show up as one deposit. Our checks in cash are office deposits. So every day, I want you to do two deposits, in some cases, three. And I'll tell you why. So I'll do checks. And I'll select in this field, again, this is off my magic box, and my deposit slip, $15.80. See that? So I click Next. I change my date to yesterday. Because even though I may not get down to the bank till Friday, and even though my credit card deposits may not show up till the following day, or later, <laughs> unfortunately, I still say, what was the day I actually took in that deposit, what, or that payment. What day did I actually process that deposit? I click OK, and I click Post and Add Another. Okay. Now at this point, I can actually print out a deposit slip. And uh, to be honest with you guys, if you are with a smaller bank, this actually is a full sheet of paper with your account number, your routing number, your name, and all your items to deposit. Some of our smaller banks, the uh, credit union, local banks, I've actually seen them accept this deposit slip. So you never know. Instead of having to fill one out by hand, your bank may take it. Now, I bank with U.S. Bank and with uh, UBS, and neither of them took it. Just so you know, they said, no, use our booklet. But I want you guys to know that's an option, okay? I'm going to just say don't print. Okay, so now I'm back to select which account. I'm going to go in. I'm going to say U.S. Bank. I got a little back noise here, guys. It uh, might have been Matt. I had to uh, mute you, Matt, just for a minute. So I'm going to select U.S. Bank Primary again. And now, and normally, if these were Visa, MasterCard, Discover, I would select all of those and, again, say Make Bank Deposit. Now, the reason why, in my case, I actually select American Express separately is because my American Express get deposited as their own line item on my bank statement. And frankly, they take sometimes two or three days. So again, I would click American Express, Next, change my date to yesterday, and post and add another. Now, this printed deposit item detail, this is the same Again, this is for an office deposit, right? This print deposit item detail would be similar to like a, a batch report for a credit card. But since you guys are doing a daily sales report every day, you don't need to do this. Okay, so just say don't print. And I'm back again one more time then to say my Visa, again, my Visa, MasterCard, um, and uh, Discover all go in together. Okay, so hold on one sec, guys. Okay, so I'm going to click Next, change my date, and click OK, and close. So what does this look like now in my bank account? If I click on Banking, and I go to View Check Register, and here's my primary bank number one, you see here they are. There's my cash and checks, there's my American Express, and there's my Visa MasterCard. Hold on just a second, guys, just a moment. Hey guys, sorry for that. Any questions on what I see here? Okay guys, did I have any questions on this? Shabrina, what happened to that $20 and that cash you deposited? Okay. Remember, I mean, I combined my cash and checks together. So if I were to ah, okay. highlight okay. like this and hit edit, okay. it says um, $15.80. Ah, okay, 15 Okay, good. Okay. And I got my it. Check. Okay. Excellent question. Okay. Okay, guys, let's go back into this make this banking. Let's, I click on banking and I click on make bank deposit. Nothing's in here except for my parentheses. Now, remember, I kept $200 in my cash drawer, right? Yes. 
Why does it say 300? Because if I were to run my daily sales and report for today, because this would be my first three hours of the day, there it is. There's that hundred dollars. Okay. So something I want to make sure you guys are very clear about. A very so where did that hundred dollar come from? Um, I uh, I actually posted off a repair order this morning for a hundred dollars. Okay. 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 And let's look at that, guys. I mean, that's an excellent question. Okay. Another fantastic feature we have in our program, which only one other program that I know of in the United States and one program in Canada lets us do this. Because this is a SQL database with okay. fully integrated accounting, we can go into this cash drawer mm -hmm. and view current cash drawer trans current cash oh, drawer okay. okay? Here okay. is that transaction for today. If I okay. made a boo boo, if this really wasn't cash, let's say it was Visa, okay. I can void this. Yes. Here's Sabrina. The payment that this belongs to is going to be voided, and it'll put the repair order back on the schedule. So let's, play. let's say okay, yes. So now see it says void in the column. Yeah. And it's back on my schedule. Ah. Okay. Let's say I really was a visa. So let's do that instead. Okay, I put close and pay. I'm ignore all this. I would never skip this. You guys know that. But for the sake of the demo, it was a visa. So you guys see, if you forgot to put something on a bill, or if you put the wrong payment method, you have the ability to go back and correct. Perfect. Now, honestly, you guys, you could go back to... September and make a correction if you needed to. Now, hopefully, you guys are reconciling your bank statement every month. So every after something's reconciled in your bank statement, you can't go back and void it. But just keep that in mind. And if you make a change from previous date, make sure you change the date. And I say that because it's a boo boo I do all the time. And I'm going to click finish. So now, guys. Let's go back into that make bank deposit. Banking. Come on, banking. Sorry guys, my mouth. Make bank deposit. Now you guys can see there's a hundred dollar visa with today's date. And here is my two hundred dollars available. Okay. Okay. One other clear thing. As, clear as mud now. Yeah. <laughs> Remember, when you guys start doing these. Um, we will, it, it takes, you guys see, it takes 10 minutes. Yep. We will hook up with you and we'll go through these step at a time. Um, we have a bunch of folks on the call that are going to be going live um, with their accounting January 2nd. We will hook up with you guys every day for three days in a row if you like and we'll run you through this. It's very simple, but in the beginning it's confusing. It's confusing. So we're here to help you. Like I said, we hook up with you 10, 15 minutes, run you through it, and I know after two or three days, you guys will have it forever, and you'll be, you know, good as gold for years to come. So we're here for you. We'll do that for you. It's included in your support subscription, okay? Nothing extra, okay? So one other thing I want you guys to be real clear about, when you click on this daily sales and cash flow report, if you let it default, to the previous day, which I already did yesterday's daily sales report, so it's defaulting to today's date. Now notice something. If I click OK, balance drawer, $200 is in there. But you guys, you can see, you see this is an active field. This is not grayed out. I can change this because remember, glorified pen and paper. So if you ever click on the daily sales and change the date, and I see this all the time. Let's say, shoot, I meant to do this differently on Friday. So somebody will change the date and redo their Friday report, which is fine. But notice something. My beginning cash and drawer says zero. Yes. So if you guys ever change your date, you need to go back, reach into your file cabinet, pull out the Yes, you know, the previous day, which in this case would be December 1st, because my report is for December 2nd, pull out that um, stack of paper, look in your magic box, 
and how much did you say you left in your cash drawer from your magic box, right? Then you would have to manually enter that in. Because what happens, biggest mistake, I see it all the time, people let this default to zero. And then they just say, Max Trash is computing 141, 31, and I count uh, 141, 31, because they're really not thinking about it. I'll be honest, it happens a lot, okay? And then they close and print. What happens is then this amount left in the cash drawer for tomorrow doesn't match what's in the parentheses in your make bank deposit. And what happens, it leaves a paper trail, guys. I've gone back and done this after three months and found out where somebody accidentally changed the date and this reset to zero and they forgot to autofill it. It shows itself. So all I'm saying is that if you can, try to remember that you never want to change that date. And if you're doing your daily sales and cash to report every day, it will default. Now, what do you do over the weekend? It will show Friday at the end, or Friday's work, include Saturday and Sunday, and then run it Monday morning, for example. Or the other thing, guys, let's be, let's be real about some logistics. There are people that don't have bookkeepers at their shop every day. They don't. So how do they handle it? Usually, if I were to go on vacation, I would tell people, take entire, the entire day's business, throw it all in an envelope, you know, checks, the batch report, all the repair orders, everything, Just throw it all in a big envelope, write the date on it, put it on my desk. So when I come back after a week's vacation, I just take out, you know, the Monday of the previous day, previous work week, dump it out on my desk, sort through it, and I just reset, to, I go one day at a time. Because if I was on vacation, this actually would say 12-1 or whatever, maybe 11-30 through 12-7. So I would always leave my starting date the same because that way my uh, beginning cash store will be correct. And I just say my ending date is the same day. So I would do 11.30 through 11.30, post and close, make a bank deposit. Then I would do 12.1 through 12.1, count it out, match it up to all the stuff in the envelope, close and print, go and make my, my bank deposit. Then I would do one for 12-2 through 12-2. Post it all, you know, count it all, print out all my reports, go in to make bank deposit. You guys following me there? Yes. Okay. Yes, Sabrina, yeah. but I mean, is there a reason why you would have to do it every day like that instead of just doing it from like 11.30 through 12.5 or whatever day, you know, you got that? You know, Jody, um, there are, uh, honestly, there are shops that do that. If you are a high volume shop, there's a lot of things that can go on in one day. You know, if, you know, our, our shop, I don't know, we could do between 15 and 15 to 25 jobs a day. And honestly, our cash drawer was kind of like a candy store. <laughs> People would take money out to buy office supplies or buy lunch or get a car wash or take $40 out and write on a yellow sticky IOU Pete. I mean, it happened all the time. So if you wait till the end of the week, which some people do do, I want to be clear about that. If you wait till the end of the week, you don't catch problems. You don't catch issues. And frankly, we call it a daily sales report because it's designed to be done daily, not weekly. But it really depends on you. Um, honestly, like I said, a lot of people's workflow is they have an accountant come in maybe one day a week or twice a week. Um, so what you would, in that case, like Matt, how often does somebody, does your guy come in on Wednesdays, Matt? Was that you? My, uh, you know, there was a shop I was talking to yesterday, I couldn't remember, and they had an accounting person only coming in Wednesdays. So technically, Jody, what you could do is, you know, let the guys do their thing. Let the guys just collect up their um, payments for the day. I still think it's a good idea to have somebody counting the cash drawer at the end of every day. Because like I said, if you're missing $50 or $100 or $300, if you count your drawer every day, it gives you an opportunity to find it. Right. Rather than figuring out, shoot, 
we lost $100 last week somehow. Where did that go? And people just don't remember a week later. You see what I'm saying on that? Yeah. Yep. Makes sense. Because, because the cash has got legs, you know, it walks out. <laughs> it walks out. Yeah. And the other thing, guys, remember, you could technically do one bank deposit at the end of the day for an office, I mean, at the end of the week, for office deposits, checks and cash. But remember, you still have to go into make bank deposit and make a bank deposit every day if you take credit cards because your visas will go through without you. Thank goodness. <laughs> they, they get deposited without you. And the only reason, guys, why I say just fill out a deposit slip every day for checks, frankly, the only reason why is because this screen is grayed out. It doesn't give me an option to say, like in Motor Track, I'm going to leave some checks in the safe. Remember how we could do that in the daily book, guys? I'm speaking to our Motor Track users that I was using their DOS version since 1992, so got a lot of familiarity. We have the ability to collect up checks and just deposit them all at the end of the week. But in Math Track, see it's grayed out. It is thinking you are going to do a daily deposit. That's the only reason why I say that. Make sense? If they were to open up this field and make it active, then it may be a little bit different. But the problem is, is they treat checks just like visas. And if we put in this date range, 12-7 to 12-7, and I took the check in, I count my checks just like I count my credit cards. That's why they said, Sabrina, in order to keep it simple, because let's say I ran my daily sales report for um, December 8th tomorrow. It, but the check came in December 7th. You see it won't be here for me to select and count. So it's just the workflow that they put in the system. And honestly, guys, it works very smooth. I, I haven't been a user. It actually is a very good snapshot. of. I think it's good business. I think it's good business. At the, the end of the week, though, I did have, you know, three or four, sometimes five envelopes, and I would hand them to my teller one at a time because, don't forget, every day I'm going into make bank deposit. Now, I know they may be off a couple of days when I go to do my bank reconciliation, but at least on my check register, they'll be relatively in order. See my deposits? And it makes your bank reconciliation, here's my deposit on the right, makes my bank reconciliation much easier, much easier. I could spend literally two days reconciling my checkbook and motor tracks, okay? So that's why we go through that practice. Again, like we had talked about, I mean, put uh, cash and checks together. I actually had to separate out my American Express because they would deposit them separately. And then the, my Visa, MasterCard, Discover card, um, actually, I think Diners card we took for a while. And, uh, you know, we can group all those together. Sabrina, okay, guys, curve, I went in. Curve ball. <clears throat> yes, we got a curve ball. Uh, end of the <laughs> month when I get the uh, bank charges. Okay. Um, excellent question. We actually uh, go into banking, reconcile our bank account. Okay, okay. Okay. And what you'll do is you'll click this Add button, and okay. we click Add Adjustment. Oh, okay. And, you know, okay. I mean, thank you for bringing yeah. that up, yeah. because this can be a lot of different things. This adjustment could be a bank charge. Mm -hmm. um, this could be your credit card processing fees. Yes. Um, okay. Even look at this one. I have an automatic adjustment that goes on my bank statement every month already preset for my health insurance because okay. they take that out automatically. Okay, okay. Now, okay, good. That, that was my that, next question, but you took, you already answered. What yeah. about my automatic now, payments? Yeah. Yes, there. Now, guys, if you pay, and we're going to talk about this on Monday. We On Monday's webinar, we talk about um, more about the bank account and about okay. pay bills. Okay. But what happens is that if you guys are, let's say, paying your NAPA, bill. Okay, let's tag a couple of things to pay. Let's say we're paying our NAPA bill and we click next. And we say it's coming out automatically. NAPA is so nice, they're willing to go into our checking account for us and take our money. 
-hmm. we still want to say it's being paid by check. Okay, and I'll show you why. We select check, we click, and we can even change our date here, by the way. Say they took it out on the first. Thank you. Click finish. So instead of printing this check, see it says to be printed, and we click post check and print, we would just say don't print it. It's a EFT, electronic fund transfer. Same thing, guys. If you use like your ATM card or, or you know Visa logo check card or debit card, you know what I'm talking about, guys. Your debit yeah. card. Yes. You would same thing. If you use your debit card instead of writing a check, which I do all the time, I hardly ever write a check. I use my debit card. You just would say for the check number debit. But it still shows up on your check register. So when you go to reconcile your bank account, it's there for you to tag. Make sense? And we'll talk more about that on Monday. That's really when we get into the bills. And um, it's something that really is pretty straightforward, guys. And again, when you start using that feature, call us up. We would rather connect up to you to your computer and walk you through a feature in 10 minutes rather than you be frustrated or not know really how to do it correctly or like some of my famous favorite customers, they do it wrong for three months and then call us later to fix it. <laughs> so it's um, our pleasure to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one hand holding in the beginning because we know if you get it right in the beginning, it'll be easy, easy as pie down the road, okay? And we still like you to come to the webinars to learn how the features work. So we're not just teaching you guys one-on-one, -on -one, um, but we definitely um, will assist you step through these things the first time. Okay, guys, do we have any other questions? <clears throat> this one. <clears throat> yes, Roman, do you have time to, do you have about another 20 minutes you can stay on the line with me? Okay. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording for our today's webinar. Um, and stay with me, Ro Roman. I'm going to stop the recording. But um, please do join us on Monday for uh, Checks and Pay 